Snyder is 6-1, and, and so is Bishop Dwinger. The two teams are tied for second place in the SAC. They kick off at 7 o'clock Friday at Spooler Stadium. The Wanger game is physical every year since I've been here in my freshman year. It's been physical, close, last second wins, you know. So this week in practice is going to be a tough week and going to be physical. Get ready for those guys. It's going to be a great atmosphere. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people. It's one of our biggest rivals. And they're going to come out ready to fight, and their best team wins. The Panthers are coming off a 48-21 win against rival Northrop, a game where the defense sacked the quarterback four times. Making a quarterback comfortable is a D-line goal every time, but when the whole defense is doing that, like DBs uh, covering, uh, covering the right guys and all that stuff, it gives us time to get to the quarterback, and it shows uh, how we work as a defense. The Saints are coming off a shutout win against Bishop Lewers. Brendan Lytle threw for over 300 yards in that game, and Dwinger rushed for 239 yards as a team, with 10 different players carrying the football. I was more proud of our guys and how they came out, um, prepared, we executed well. I thought there was uh, good energy. Uh, yeah, and, and we were blessed to get a lot of guys in, so overall, uh, it was a good night for us. Dwinger won state last year, and Snyder was the only team to beat them. The loss left a bitter taste in the Saints' mouths. Losing to them last year really uh, made us mad, and I think we learned from that. So hopefully we go into this with a uh, fire under us and uh, just go out there and get the win. This will be senior night for the Panthers. If they win, they will finish the regular season undefeated at home. It's going to be a lot of emotion going in there for us, our last, our last guaranteed home game. So, you know, we're going to want to win. We want to, want to be competitive and show those guys that we're really the top SAC. This year, Snyder's top rushers have been Lenny Bennett and Cameron Trotter. They did not start last year, though Bennett did play 11 games a year ago. This year, Bennett has rushed for over 700 yards, and Trotter has rushed for over 400. I think it's always part of our plan as a program to, to have those young guys develop so that they're ready by the time they're juniors and seniors to be able to share the load and the workload that it takes you know, to uh, execute our run game. And both those guys, Lenny and Cameron, have done a great job, you know, along with the offensive line because uh, we can run the ball very well and it's something that is a staple of our offense and we have no problem rotating those guys around. They both add different dimensions to the run game, but both uh, things that are, are quality and what we want to do. The passing game has been solid as well. John Barnes Jr. has completed 58% of his passes and receivers Alonzo Derrick and Dylan Duff have averaged over 40 yards per game. But there are other offensive areas that the Panthers hope to improve on. John does a good job of throwing the ball directing the offense, getting the ball to where it needs to be. Uh, offensive line wise, um, you know, we've been solid up front. We need to be better in, in the execution of just fundamental things that allow us to be successful against really good teams and really good scheme. But uh, we've been productive and we just have to continue to increase our level of play and, and get better. For Dwinger, Brendan Lytle's passing numbers have gone up. Last year, he completed 45% of his passes. This year, he's completed 66%. And after throwing for 834 yards last year, he's eclipsed 1,300 yards this year. To have a sophomore experience what he was able to experience with, with our team last year and then, and then begin our season this year fresh as a junior, uh, you know, it's great maturity, great leadership. I think we've got some, some guys around him that, that uh, you know, he can go to and he's confident in those guys. They're confident in him. Line's doing a very good job of protecting him and uh, it helps our running game and, and vice versa. The Saints continue to run the ball well with multiple backs. Louis Tipman remains the leading rusher, and Devin Tipman and Patrick Finley have also been productive. But Toby Eckie has averaged six or more yards per carry in each of the last two games. This is Eckie's first year of playing football. He played soccer prior to this year, so, you know, uh, he's learning the game. Every week he's getting better. Uh, we're trying to get him opportunities as we go through the season, and, and uh, you know, it's exciting. You know, we even had the Toby chant going in the in the student section. Wide receiver Michael Lito spent the last three years at Snyder. He has since transferred to Dwinger. Lito is now the Saints' leading receiver with 357 yards and three touchdowns. I think there's a, a really strong grasp of what we're doing. I, I think uh, he, and, he and Brendan, uh, you know, their timing and, and uh, trust in one another is there. Uh, you know, alongside him, you got Finley and Eifert and, and other guys, you know, O'Keefe. Uh, Fosno at the tight end position and other guys that we're bringing in besides that. So uh, there's a good rhythm right now, especially between uh, 
you know, Michael and, and uh, Brendan, but, but as well in our passing game, uh, some good things are happening uh, across the board with all our guys. Snyder's defense has pitched two shutouts, and they've had two games where they only gave up two scores. They did give up 49 points against Homestead, but other than that, the most they've surrendered was 21 against Northrop. We've been having a lot of growing pains and stuff, but we're, I feel like we're finally here now. We're like, we're finally know each other. We're a solidified defense, and we're going to be great now. I feel like we have a lot to work around. We got better at everything, so I feel like we're ready. The most points Dwinger's defense has surrendered was 15 against Homestead. They've held five of their opponents to one score or less and kept the now 4-3 and three Carroll team out of the end zone in week five. We've uh, pre prepared very well. Um, we've always done our homework on each team and we've always come out ready to play, so I think that plays a big part in why we have been doing well. This is Thad Goff for Summit City Sports. The Saints and the Panthers kick off at 7 p.m. at Spooler Stadium. Has plenty of time, chucks it deep down the middle of the field, wide open player, it is caught, and that is O'Keefe with a catch at the 15, the 10, the 5, trots in for a Dwinger score. Three to the right on second and 10, here's a bomb, and that's gonna be up for grabs and picked off. That one was up for grabs, and Jay Sean Underwood gets his third interception of the season. It's Mix on the Beat. beat.